Okay, so to begin with the class, we'll start in Vaparita Karani or a reclining position of your choice. So if you'd like to have the legs up against the wall, resting on a surface or even just knees bent, making sure that whichever position that you choose, that as we do with restorative, you, you start from the ground up. So making sure that underneath you're comfortable, you know, that there's no gaps or cold. When we come to practice, it shouldn't feel like this is, you know, a huge effort. What we're trying to do is differentiate the normal day, the doing day, with this is our practice. So this is our being practice. So taking a couple of moments to notice how you're feeling and how the breath is. And all noticing is done without judgment. It's just an easy, gentle awareness. It's like a tuning in the radio. You're just slowing down everything else in order to focus on yourself for this next hour. And so letting all of the doing of the day, all of the doing yet to be done, to fall away if you can, just as best you can, to allow yourself to make this time your priority for the next hour. So each time you notice that the mind drifts, noticing what it's drifted to, and gently escorting the mind back again. Taking a moment to perhaps be aware of how the breath is coming into the body and how it feels in the body. So do you notice maybe the chest rising or the tummy rising, even maybe the ribs expanding? Or perhaps you notice it, notice it in the nose or in the throat. Whatever it is, it's your experience and there's nothing wrong or right. It's just being aware of how it is. And then noticing the breath going back out again as well. So noticing that ebb and flow and how the body adjusts with that ebb and flow. Noticing the position of the head on the floor, the gentle curve at the back of the neck, the position of the spine laid out on the floor. Does it feel comfortable? Does it feel like there's kind of a surrendering or a softening to allow the muscles of the back to release and let go. And how about the front of the body, the chest, especially if you've been hunched over or using a computer or using phone or driving, anything like that. Noticing how the muscles of the upper chest feel. And also the abdominals. If we sit a lot, there's a lot of kind of compression of the organs in the mid section. So notice how it is when you lie down on the floor to give the organs the space, the space to be, space to expand. And then coming down to the lower half of the body, the connection between the upper body and the lower body, that hinging, the pelvic area, which is like a hinge, you can tilt forward and back. Noticing how the lower back might feel as a result of that pelvis tilting. So if you flatten the lower back on the floor, you're tilting the pelvis very slightly back. And when you release the tummy in order to bring that little arch back in again, you're tilting it forward. So how is that movement for you? There may be very little movement or maybe no kind of discernible difference in your mind. Just imagine, you know, it can take some time. We don't spend any time kind of focusing on the pelvis tilted forward and back. But you could sense, feel, or imagine the pelvis tilting. And then becoming aware of the legs and the knees, the ankles and the feet. And taking a moment to include the arms, the elbows, wrists, and hands. And become aware of the body as a whole. Are there any particular 
points that maybe feel a little uncomfortable or they want a little bit more attention. And just becoming aware of whatever messages are coming to you about how the body's feeling. And maybe breathing into that area. Imagine breathing into it and out from it. And that can sometimes encourage a sense of release in that area if there's tightness or if there's holding on. And perhaps just with your eyes closed, just rotating or your eyes can be just gently closed over or a, a soft gaze, but rotating the wrists. So you're not making any big movements, just moving the wrists, gentle, circular motion, and then changing direction. And maybe doing the same thing with the ankles if you feel you have the space. So just rotating the feet to make those nice circular movements in one direction and then changing direction. And then coming back to a neutral position, spreading out the fingers and spreading out the toes. You might wiggle the fingers and the toes. And notice how or if any of the joints click or crack, that they feel that they needed a little bit more stretch. And maybe point and flex the feet and the hands. So you're pointing the toes and flexing them. Same thing with the hands, it's kind of pressing the heels of the hands away and then pointing the fingers down. And just moving the hands and the feet any way that you feel feels right for you right now. But if you go in one direction, make sure to go in the opposite direction as well. Give a balance to the movement. And then coming back to neutral. And if your legs are extended along the wall or if they're lying along the floor, just bending the knees now so the feet are flat on the surface. And gently sway the knees from side to side. And this movement is really, really slow. It's just to notice what are the legs feeling. You know, when you, sometimes you might feel it on the outside of the hips as you turn one direction and the other. Or you might feel it in the lower abdominals or even around the waist, maybe the knees. Just taking a moment to really tune into the lower half of the body. Does that actually feel like? Is it pleasant or? unpleasant or just completely neutral and then coming back up to center bring the soles of the feet together to allow the knees to fall out to the sides and this hip rotation can perhaps feel a little strong sometimes it does strengthen the muscles in the insides of the legs but being mindful of the knees so the knees may feel restricted if the hips are tight you know so the knees should stay in line with the hips. You're not trying to force anything out, out any further than it comfortably goes. And then the next breath in, you're bringing the knees back up to center again. This time bring the knees together and bring the feet out to the side so that your knees are kind of falling together. You're creating like a sort of a triangle with the lower legs. It's a very slight inner rotation of the hips. So your feet are still against the wall, but the knees are together and the feet are out to the sides. And take a couple of breaths here, because this can sometimes be interesting at the tops of the legs. It's not something that we do very often, but the tops of the legs or even the lower abdominals, noticing how they adjust to this position after holding it for a couple of moments. And when you're ready, walk those feet in. So your feet, your ankles, your knees are together and allow the knees to drop over to one side, turning the head in the opposite direction. So you're still lying on the ground, feet are against the surface, 
the wall or the floor, and just a gentle little spinal twist. Coming up through center, allow the knees to come to the other side. Gaze is in the opposite direction. And notice how the breath may be or maybe not slowing down and connecting with the movement. Or becoming aware if they're disconnected. You know, this is about the awareness and getting that synergy with the practice. And then coming back up to center again. This time breathing in, let the arms float up overhead and rest on the floor behind the head. You can bend the elbows if you like as you breathe in. And as you breathe out, bring the arms back down by the sides again. So just doing this for a couple of movements, breathing in, arms are floating up overhead, breathing out, bring them back down by the sides. We'll just do that two more times. Breathing in, sweeping the arms up overhead, breathing out, coming back down. And last time, breathing in, floating the arms up overhead and breathing out, bringing them back by the sides again. This time, roll over onto one side, resting there for a moment. The knees are coming up towards the tummy, the chin is in towards the chest. And just find that comfortable little curve of the back or whatever position is most comfortable for you that you feel that you're releasing all effort and allowing you to bring the awareness to the whole back of the body. So we had the floor and the wall, just helping with the alignment and lengthening everything out. And how does it feel now to kind of curl in on yourself, allowing the lengthening to continue, but with the broadening of the space between the vertebra, the whole length of the spine. You're traveling that awareness from the top of the head, back of the head, down the length of the spine, to the coccyx, the backs of the legs, all the way down to the heels and even the soles of the feet. Then when you're ready, just using the upper hand to press the floor away and come up into tabletop just for a moment so that we can just do a little lengthening into the spine. So reaching the hands forward, doing a lovely, Kind of a puppy dog where the toes are curled under, the hips are lifted, chest is coming down towards the floor, but you're lengthening the crown of the head forward and the elbows are above the floor. And staying here for a breath or two, but even move the hips from side to side if you felt that was the right thing to do to just sense into the spine. And then keeping the hands where they are, just rolling the spine forward and allowing the front of the feet to come down onto the floor and the hips are pointing towards the floor but they're not coming all the way down and you're lifting your head, head and shoulders and rolling the back, coming all the way back down towards the heels again, curling the toes under, lengthening the spine. And breathing in, rolling the back forward, hips are pressing forwards as if down towards the ground and lifting the head and shoulders. And then coming back to tabletop again, and coming into an easy cross-legged pose. So if you'd like to put any cushions or anything underneath the knees, give yourself plenty of little supports wherever you need them. And closing over the eyes for a moment. So you can rub the hands together if you like to sense into the hands, the sense of touch, your skin. How does the hands feel? You know, the temperature of the hands, the sense of the skin, the pressure maybe of the hands pressing together and then pressing the palms together spreading out the fingers and pressing the thumbs to the heart center lifting up the elbows and gently pressing the palms of the hands together shoulders are down away from the ears elbows lifted wrists are dropping down and then release the thumb away from the heart and point the fingers outwards away from the heart and bring the insides of the wrists towards the heart so there's gentle little pressure coming in towards the heart and then release the hands out again. And this time turn the hands to point the fingers downwards and the insides of the wrists are lifting upwards. And coming back in reverse. So the insides of the wrist pointing towards the heart, the fingers pointing out from the heart. And then fingers pointing up towards the ceiling, thumbs pressing against the heart center again. 
and release the hands. So just shake them out. They might feel a little bit, you know, if you use computers a lot or a telephone, they may feel a little tighter restricted when we do that because it stretches the insides of the wrists. So just move those hands in any direction that you feel that you need to and stretch out the fingers and clasp them again. So you can kind of close, open and close them however feels comfortable to get into each of those joints and then shake out the hands. So it helps to get the fluid going all the way through the hands again. It gets the mobility through, especially if you've been holding your hand in a certain position, clicking mice or typing. So it allows that just movement and fluid and blood flow right through the hands again. Press the palms, the hands down on the knees and do lovely little circles with the shoulders. So you're coming up, back and down, rolling the shoulders forward, up and down. And you could even bring in the movement of the spine in with it. So, so kind of doing um, cat cow, where you're tucking the chin in towards the chest and arching the spine, lifting up the shoulders, pressing the chest forward and lifting the head. Breathing in, you're kind of closing in towards yourself and rolling the shoulders up and down. And just connecting with the breath, however feels comfortable, and then changing direction. So it's all slowly and with control. You may even notice it into the armpits or you might hear some clicking and cracking of the shoulders. Just whatever feels right, bringing in the movement of the spine and the shoulders. And then coming back to center. The eyes are gently closed over or the gaze is just softened so that you're not making uh, much effort with the eye muscles, the muscles of the eyes. Breathing in, sweeping up one arm towards the ceiling. Breathing out, bending the elbow and just gently holding the back of the neck. Turning the head to look up at the elbow. The other hand can come down onto the floor behind the hip to give you a little bit more support and lift that elbow up towards the ceiling. So feel a nice deep lengthening stretch along the whole side of the body from the armpit right down to the hip and see if you can make the hips nice and heavy and grounded. And wherever you feel that you may be, you know, holding on or that it's real like you're it's kind of like you're pushing try to breathe into that to soften it so that it feels like there's a floating upwards of the upper half of the body and a dropping downwards of the lower half of the body and that just comes with practice with the breath breathing in breathing out releasing the effort and then coming back upright, releasing the back of the head, bringing the arm down to the floor. And then the other side, lifting up the arm up towards the ceiling, nice lengthening inside the body. And bend the elbow, just cupping the back of the neck. Turn the head to look up towards that elbow. The other hand comes down onto the floor behind the hip and maybe out a little, just to give you a little bit of support, allowing you to reach that elbow up towards the sky. So imagine that nice, feeling of lightness, lengthening the side of the body, allowing the elbow to lift up. And again, the gaze can be towards the elbow, like, or close over the eyes and just bring the awareness within. And then releasing, coming back up to center, allow the hand to float down off the floor, breathing in, sweeping both arms up overhead. Breathing out, crossing the arms and resting the hands down onto the upper thighs or the knees. Breathing out the next time, folding forward, gazes down towards the floor. And staying here for a couple of moments, so feeling that broadening of the upper back as well as the lower back. So it releases the compression across the spine. You can tuck the chin in towards the chest. With each breath out, just softening into that forward fold. Breathing in, sweeping the arms up overhead, looking up at the hands. Breathing out, crossing the arms again in the opposite direction. So it's the other hand that comes to the front, resting the hands down on the thighs or the knees. And the next breath out, hinging forwards. Just folding over, broadening the upper back, lower back. Feeling that relief in the shoulders or in the spine if you've been sitting. And each breath out, releasing any holding on or any kind of gripping in the 
tummy or the tops of the legs. And then the next breath in, coming back upright, lifting up the arms up towards the ceiling and breathing out, bringing them back down onto the floor. If you're sitting on a, a blanket or anything, you might want to move it away. We're just going to do reverse tabletop. So bringing the hands behind the hips and extend the legs out in front. The feet will be flat on the floor, hip width distance apart, and I'll turn to the side here. So the hands will be a little bit wider than the hips and like the elbows are bending be back behind you rather than out to the sides to give you plenty of stability. Feet are hip width distance apart and don't worry if the hips don't lift. You can just work on lifting up the chest. Breathing in, preparing, breathing out, press the floor away with the feet and the hands, lifting the hips up. And allow the gaze to just go towards the ceiling. Staying here for a breath or two. So feeling into the work of the shoulders. Nice broadness across the upper chest. Making sure the knees aren't flailing out to the side so they're trying to stay in line with the hips. And then the next breath out, dropping the hips down to the floor, gently placing them across the shins, outside edges of the feet rest on the floor, fingertips outside the hips, lift the hips up off the floor and back down again. And then you uncross the legs again and cross in the opposite direction, outside edges of the feet resting on the floor, fingertips out to the edge. And when you lean forward, it allows you to get, get a little bit more space to lift up the hips. So it's, it's all about the counterbalance. If you use the fingertips like pressing away from you, it lets you lean forward, which helps you to lift up the hips. Brilliant. And then extend the legs out on the floor in front of you. Give your legs a little shake and a little rock from side to side. Point the heels away. So pressing the heels away allows the legs, the backs of the legs to lengthen. So you may, if you um, have hyper mobility, the space may be reduced at the backs of the knees when you do that. So just being careful not to overextend, but just to lengthen into the back of the leg for a moment by pressing the heels away, letting the heels lift up and then rest the heels back down again. Place the fingertips on the floor outside the, uh, the hips, opening up the front of the chest, extending the upper body upwards, crown of the head is extending upwards. Breathing here for a moment or two. The feet are in line with one another, toes are pointing up towards the ceiling. So this is helping the legs to remain engaged. And then breathing in, sweep the arms up overhead. Breathing out, hinging forwards. When you hinge forward, if there's tightness in the hamstrings, just bend the legs a little, or if there's any discomfort in the lower back. Bending the knees a little allows you to hinge forward a little bit more. And then you can bring the hands to rest on the outside of the legs, at the feet, on the floor on either side of the legs. And then when you're ready, if the knees are bent, just perhaps look to straighten the legs along the floor. And we're just resting here, breathing here for a couple of breaths. Allowing breath to settle and the body to release and soften into the posture, into the asana. Looking at your feet, I want you to bring your left hand over to the outside of the right foot or the right leg, wherever you might be, and then bring the right arm out to the side so that you're doing a sitting twist. And if you feel that it's like the arm is up too high, just drop the arm down so that it's in line with the shoulder. So you get a nice twist, an opening of the front of the chest. So you're using the left hand and the leg to give you a little bit of a lever. It gives you a nice twist and then the other arm's extending so it's helping to open up the chest and then bring that right arm back to meet the left hand and bring the left hand over to the left leg and bring the right hand to the outside of the left leg. So now we do the other side. We're using a resistance of the left leg to help open and the left arm extends out behind us to open up the front of the chest. It's a sitting twist. If you're very comfortable and you'd like to reach the outside of the foot, you can absolutely do that. 
or the extended arm behind you can wrap around your back. But extending out behind you is absolutely perfect as well. And then the back hand will come back to the front to meet the other hand and then place both hands to the outsides on the floor of each leg, gazing down at the knees, relaxing the shoulders, then lifting the arms to extend them alongside the legs, breathing in, lifting the arms up, breathing out, bringing them back down by the sides. Lovely. Bring the hands down onto the floor, bending the knees, and coming back into tabletop. So we'll just do a cat cow for a moment or two, and then we'll do some leg lifts. So breathing in, you lift the tailbone up, drop the tummy, lift the head. Breathing out. Oh, I think this is, oh no, it's grand. Breathing out, you're tucking the tailbone under, arching the spine, dropping the head. Breathing in, lifting the tailbone, dropping the tummy, lifting the head. And breathing out, tucking the tailbone, arching the spine, dropping the head. And just doing that once more in your own time. Whatever way feels right for you. And then coming back into neutral, into the, the starting tabletop position. And this time we're going to use the sideways movement. So we're moving the rib cage up and then to the right, and then down, and then to the left. So you're kind of doing sideways cat-cow. And notice how that feels for you. Does it feel right? Does it feel good? Is there any adjustments that you need? And when you're ready, moving in the opposite direction. So if you started with going left to right, now you're going right to left. And if you hear a little bit of crunching or clicking and it's not painful, that's okay. If it is painful and you need to stop or adjust anything, absolutely do that. Everybody's spines and joints are different. The more mobility we can bring into all of our joints and strength training, the, the better for us as we, as we age. So then coming back to neutral, curling the toes under, Lifting the knees up off the floor and just hover the knees for a moment. When you do this, tuck the tailbone under so you're drawing the lower belly in and make sure you're pressing the floor away. So that protects your lower back and strengthening the upper back. Then drop the knees back down again. Prop the fronts of the feet onto the floor. You can bring the knees wide. You can sit down on the heels. If that's uncomfortable at all, putting some blankets underneath the front of the feet. I'm just coming into a kind of a beginner's child's pose. So you can stack the fists and rest your forehead on the stacked fists. So the knees are wide. And see how this feels in your back, in the shoulders. Are the shoulders tense or tight? I always found that when I started practicing, if I was working on the computer all day, my shoulders would be extremely painful, not because they didn't have the strength in them, but because of the tension that was in them. So working into these postures slowly, just waking up the joints, can just help with the blood flow. And then it takes away that tension that causes so much discomfort and pain. Then placing the hands flat on the floor again, coming back up into tabletop, bringing the knees in line, curling the toes under, draw the belly in, tuck the tailbone under, press the floor away with the hands, and then lift the knees up off the floor. So you're hovering the knees again. And notice a difference between when you just lift the knees without doing that, you know, protection of the lower back versus doing that work first. And then press back into downward dog. So you're working towards bringing the heels towards the floor, but don't worry if that doesn't happen. And then just lift one hand and the other. So that you're taking the pressure off the hands and off the wrists and just looking out under one arm and out under the other. So you're being light on your hands. 
It helps you to strengthen your back and your tummy. And then keep both hands on the floor and lift up one leg and then place it down. And then lift the other leg and place it down. And it's, you know, just alternating, lifting one, lifting the other, and getting comfortable with your balance. And then coming into all four in downward dog, see if you can bring your right hand to the outside of the left leg and look under your armpit. And this is a bit twister-esque, but you know, just see how you get on and have a bit of a laugh with it. Then release that hand, place it back down, take the left hand, put it to the outside of the right, ankle looking under your armpit. And then release that hand back down onto the floor, drop the knees down, big toes together, sitting back on the heels, bringing the arms across, this time resting the palms of the hands down on the floor and resting your forehead on the back of the hands. And see how the hips and the shoulders, have they softened? Do they feel a little more able to release and surrender into the postures, softening, letting go? In fact, releasing as much tension as you can and increasing the blood flow enables you to strengthen those joints much more. And then coming back up to tabletop again. This time, I want you to lift the right, sorry, this is my left, <laughs> the left foot and pressing the sole of the foot up towards the ceiling. So you're kind of pulsing it a little and we're just staying on the palms of the two hands and just pulsing the left foot and then place that left knee down. We do the same on the other side lifting the right knee, pulsing the sole of the foot up towards the ceiling, trying to keep the hips as square as possible, and then placing the knee back down again. This time, we're going to lift the left knee off the floor, sole of the foot is pointing up towards the ceiling, and then see if you could lift the right hand. Now, if you find that you're really out of balance here or feel really wobbly, Curl the toes under of the foot that's resting on the floor. That can give a little bit more grip. And then lifting up the right hand off the floor, reaching it forward if you have the space, or just bringing it like to the outside of the head, you know, so you can have the elbow pointing out to the side if you like. And then dropping the hand down to the floor and the knee down to the floor, and we do the other side. So getting your balance, getting your stability, Left knee stays on the floor, lifting the right knee up. So the foot pointing up towards the ceiling and then bringing the weight into the right hand, lifting up the left hand and either extending it forward or just placing the fingers to the outside of the head, the elbow to the outside. And you have to use your back and your tummy muscles a lot to hold and give you the balance here. And then placing them back down again. Now we have one more challenge here. And again, needs a lot of abdominal and back strength, but it also helps with strengthening these areas and with strengthening the shoulders and the hips. So bringing the weight into the right hand and uh, the right knee, we're lifting up the left knee off the floor. And then the weight is gonna go into the left hand. So we're gonna take the right hand up off the floor and just see if you could reach back towards the foot. Now. If it feels like in any way it's going to cramp or you can't reach, that's okay. You can just have the hand extended behind you. Otherwise you're reaching towards the front of the foot and your gaze can be down towards the floor. And then when you're ready, releasing the foot, placing the hand down on the floor, knee back down on the floor. And we come to the other side, lifting up the right foot lifting up the left hand, extending the left hand back, reaching for the front of the foot, or just reaching the hand back. And it takes a bit of balance, a little bit of coordination, breathing, <laughs> don't forget to breathe. And then releasing the foot, hand back down off the floor, knee down. Bring the knees wide, sitting down with the heels, 
And this time reaching the arms forward, little fingers out to the outside edges of the mat, and you're lowering your chin and chest down towards the floor, or else the forehead down towards the floor. The elbows are up off the floor. And sliding the hands back, bringing the knees together. If you have, if your knees are sensitive or tired at this stage, if you want to put a cushion underneath the kneecaps, you can absolutely do that or underneath the wrists, whatever you need to do. We're going to come up onto the knees now and just adjust to my camera very slightly. So I'm not cutting off my head. <laughs> so again we're working into the quads so if you need to hold on to something for a bit of balance you can do that you can rest a hand against the wall or the hand can be on the hip and we're bending up one knee so one foot is going to stay on the floor we're going to bring up the other foot so you're just bringing the foot in towards the bottom you want to keep the knees as closely in line with the hips as you can and the hips pointing forwards so the intention is, is to press the hips forward and this extends the hip flexor and also works into the fronts of the thighs, into the quads. So bringing the heel in towards the buttocks, pressing the hips forward and then raising the right arm up if it's the left foot you have on the left hand. Right hand up towards the ceiling, just extending upwards and perhaps leaning back a little. Don't forget to breathe. Release the hand back down, release the foot, and we do the other side. So once again, getting your balance and bringing the right foot up into the right hand. If you need to use the toes curled under on the left foot to give you a little bit of stability, doing that. And if there's any kind of tension or cramping, then by all means, like bring your foot forward or move into it any way that you can or any way that feels right for you. Otherwise, you're bringing the foot in the heel in towards the heel, the heel in towards the buttock, pressing the hips forward, getting your alignment right so the hips are square, facing forward, the chest is open, shoulders are in line, and then breathing in, lifting up the opposite arm, pressing the chest forward, looking up towards the ceiling if that feels okay. And don't forget to breathe. And then letting that hand float back down, releasing the back foot. And this time, stepping one foot forward. We're going to lean into a little lunge and then sit back with a runner's stretch. So leaning into a little lunge. Once again, check that those hips stay in line. So you're not kind of turning to the side or getting a twist. And you're, when you're coming back into the runner's stretch, you can bring your hands down onto the floor and you can point the toes up towards the ceiling. And taking your time, so breathing into it and slowly moving over that front leg if that feels right. And then coming forward, bring your hands gently to rest on the top of the knee and pressing the hips forward, opening the front of the chest. Placing the front of the foot of the back leg down on the floor. And once more, breathing out, sitting back. You can curl the toes under the back leg. Sitting back down, placing the hands on each side for some balance if you need to. And then coming back up to centre, bring that front foot back to meet the back. And then we're going to do the other side. And again, you're just moving gently and fluidly. So when you start, it might feel a little tight, it might feel a little uncomfortable. So you're just coming forward and back a little, sensing into the joints, not jarring anything, not straining. And breathing in, coming forward, gently placing the hands on the top of the knee. So make sure you're not pressing down into the knee. So the hands like could be lifted. You're pressing the hips forward, the hips are square, the shoulders are in line. 
front of the foot can rest on the floor of the back leg if you like, that deepens the stretch of the hip flexor. And then coming back, you can curl the toes under again if you like. You try to keep the hips in line as you come back and sit down towards the heel. And also straighten that front leg. Toes are pointing up towards the ceiling. And you're slowly releasing towards the front of the leg. Breathing in, coming back up one last time. Pressing the hips forward. Breathing out, coming back. And then coming back up to center, bringing the knees in line. And one little twist. So front of the feet caressing on the floor, depending if you have um, any discomfort on the front of the feet, if you prefer to have the blanket underneath the front of the feet, as well as underneath the knees, that can be a nice little comfort, a little support, knees and ankles in line. And to give a little bit of height, you can curl under the toes if you like, or just keep the feet flat. Breathing in, sweeping the arms up overhead. Breathing out, bringing the left hand down towards the heel. If it doesn't reach towards the heel, just placing the hand on the lower back. The other hand is reaching up. And then you can turn to look towards the opposite. Like you could look towards the side, if you like, so that you're twisting slightly, but your hips and your shoulder of the lifted arm are still pointing forwards. So you're opening up the front of the chest. Breathing in, coming back up, facing back to the right, lifting up the arms again in line. Breathing out, bringing the opposite hand down and leaning back. So you're pressing the hips forward. It's a gentle back bend. It's, an, it's a, a variation of camel. The hand is either coming to the heel or it's to the lower back. You're turning the head to the side. Don't forget to breathe. The hand comes to the lower back and then up towards the ceiling and breathing out, folding forwards, the hands come in prayer in front of the chest, coming down onto the floor and lowering the upper body down, the hips stay raised and just swing the hips from side to side. So releasing all effort in the back. Let the breath settle. And then placing the hands on the floor, coming back upright. If you have a blanket on the floor, just moving that to the side. And if you're comfortable and you have the space, we're just going to rock. We're going to sit down on the sitting bones, bring the knees in towards the chest, curling in, so rounding the spine, making sure you're not going to bump into anything, and just let yourself go back and forth. Have a bit of fun with it. It's a little massage of back, but also it helps to strengthen the muscles, the abdominals with control, and just this gentle playfulness. And then the next time you come down, just staying there, bring the hands to the front of the knees, allow the lower legs to be relaxed, rock from side to side. Bring the hands between the knees so that you reach to the outside edges of the foot. So we're a happy baby. And then you gently draw down the knees towards the shoulders, which helps you to rock from side to side. The head can rest on the floor. And then release the feet, bring the knees in towards the chest, bring the arms around the outside of the knees, and again, rock from side to side. Resting the feet down onto the floor. Bring the right knee into the chest. Extend the sole of the right foot up towards the ceiling. Bring the straightened leg towards the upper body. Lifting up the head and chest if you're comfortable doing that. Bring the knee into the chest again. And then cross the ankle above the opposite knee, pressing the right knee away. So you've got your number four. Bring the arms out to the sides. Drop the foot down to the left hand side. So you're getting a spinal twist and you're looking over in the opposite direction. Enjoy that nice openness to the whole side of the body.
breathing in, coming back up to center, and then drop the knees over to the other side, bringing the gaze in the opposite direction. And they may be still very high up, you know, they don't need to be dropping onto the floor or anything like that. Just allow there be a softening in the body. As you breathe in and as you breathe out. Coming back up to center. And then bring that right knee into the chest again, lifting the head up towards the knee if you can. And then place the right foot down on the floor. You do the other side, bring the opposite knee in towards the chest and lifting the head towards the knee, straightening the leg. Bring the hand around to the back of the thigh. Rest the head back down on the floor, sole of the foot is reaching upwards. And then if you can, you're bringing your hands to the back of the calf and gazing at the front of your knee. So you're lifting your head and shoulders off the floor. And then bending the knee into the chest again, placing the ankle above the opposite knee, pressing the left knee away. So you get your shape, the number four, arms out to the side. Dropping the foot over to the right hand side this time and bring your gaze to the left. Breathing in, coming back up through center and drop the knees over to the left. Bring your gaze to the right. Coming back up to center. Bring the knee into the chest again, lifting the head towards the knee and straightening the leg and then place the foot down on the floor. Head and shoulders back down onto the floor again. Bring the knees in towards the chest, leaving the head and shoulders on the floor. This time, let the lower parts of the knee, the legs just hang. The knees are together and you're trying to keep them in line with the hips as much as you can. Arms out to the side and drop the knees over to one side. So the twist is slightly higher up along the spine. Your gaze is in the opposite direction. And notice if there's anywhere where you may be holding on. Can you, you know, release that tension in any way? Like noticing if the tummy feels tight or the glutes or the spine. It's finding comfort in the posture. And breathing in, coming back up through center, coming back into alignment again, and then dropping the knees to the other side. Gaze is in the opposite direction. Each breath out, softening, releasing, letting go, finding your steady, comfortable seat. And breathing in, coming back up to center. Hug the knees in, bringing the forehead up towards the knees. Place the feet flat on the floor, bringing the arms up overhead, holding the opposite elbows. Extend the legs along the floor, pointing the feet away. And feel that stretch into the fronts of the legs. And then take a nice big deep breath in through the nose. And as you breathe out through the mouth, bring the arms by the sides. And just holding here for a moment, noticing how the feet fall out to the side, how the palms of the hands are just gently relaxed and how you feel in the body. And then if you'd like to adjust for Shavasana, just doing that slowly and consciously by bending up the knees first, rolling over onto the side and moving to get all of the bits and pieces that you'd like to get. If you want to get cushions for underneath the knees or a pillow for underneath the head. Socks for your feet, stay nice and warm.
And just a reminder, if you use a pillow or a, a flattish pillow or um, a folded blanket for underneath the head, don't forget how you can do that um, wedge that I've described before. So as you rest down, the blanket is underneath the shoulders as well as the head, and you can grab the top corners and roll them under. So it creates a little your head sized pillow that feels like it's just cocooning your head. Palms of the hands can rest on the belly or they can be away from the sides of the body. Make sure that you're warm enough. So if you want to have blankets over you, and if you'd like a little bit of darkness, then having a hood pulled over or even having a little rolled up towel, little hand towel can be really useful to just place over the eyes. And allowing the breath to soften, allow the feet to fall out to the side, letting go of all effort. With Shavasana, corpse pose, this is where the body and the nervous system reaps the rewards of practice. So of that movement of the connection with the breath, allowing there to be a softening, a releasing and a letting go. I'm going to read you a poem called The Trees by Philip Larkin. The trees are coming into leaf, like something almost being said. The recent buds relax and spread, their greenness is a kind of grief. Is it that they are born again and we grow old? No, they die too. Their yearly trick of looking new is written down in rings of grain. Yet still the unresting castles thresh in full-grown thickness every May. Last year is dead, they seem to say, begin afresh, afresh, afresh.
trees are coming into leaf, like something almost being said. The recent buds relax and spread, their greenness is a kind of grief. Is it that they are born again and we grow old? No, they die too. Their yearly trick of looking new is written down in rings of grain. Yet still the unresting castles thresh in full-grown thickness every May. Last year is dead, they seem to say. Begin afresh, afresh, afresh. Just deepening the breath. Sensing into the body. Bending up the knees. And just gently rock the knees from side to side. Sensing into the back. Maybe just even rubbing the fingertips together again and moving the wrists. When you're ready, just rolling over onto one side and resting there for a moment. So once again, the knees are coming up towards the tummy, the chin in towards the chest. Noticing how the body's feeling at the end of this practice. You can keep the eyes closed if you like. Or have a gentle gaze. Just using the upper hand to press the floor away, coming up into an upright seated position and staying really comfortable. So if you want to have the blanket around you or the cushions underneath the knees, just bring the hands together. So you're still kind of staying curled up, protecting yourself, comforting yourself. Bringing the hands together, just rubbing the palms of the hands together. Now we're just in the temperature of the hands, maybe the sensation of the skin. Is there anything? new, the shapes of the fingers, and then placing the hands at the top of the head. It's this gentle closing of the practice, so thanking the head and the mind, and even noticing just the sensitivity of the scalp. Bringing the hands to the front of the face, cupping the hands over the eyes, and maybe enjoying that darkness, or if you prefer to move the hands a little and just notice the skin or the hairline, whatever feels good and feels right. And bringing the hands down along the face, cupping along the jawline, noticing how the jaw is feeling, how the tongue is in the mouth, and the teeth. Bringing the hands down alongside the neck and throat, maybe even resting the sides of the hands along the jawline so that you can, you know, rest your chin almost or your jawline on your hands, moving the head from side to side, noticing maybe the softness in the muscles of the neck, noticing your pulse or your swallow. Bring one hand out of the tummy, one hand out of the heart, bowing the head for a moment, just giving it a moment so that you can sense your hands, maybe the weight of the hands or the temperature. And then take a nice deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Bringing the hands together in prayer position, pressing thumbs to the heart center, bowing the head. And just taking a moment to acknowledge or notice anything that may have come up for you during the practice, either physically, emotionally, or mentally. You know, sometimes we can be exhausted and feel more energized or the other way around or irritated, but then relaxed. It's all just a combination. And nothing is right, nothing is wrong. It is what it is. It's just noticing it and acknowledging it without judgment. And give yourself thanks for coming to practice tonight in this wet evening and I give you sincere thanks for coming to practice with me. Namaste. Thanks a minute.